Okay, so now you've made all your measurements over a number of minutes. I'm providing you here with some extra data it, as if we had continued the reaction for some longer period of time. This is necessary in order to make the distinction between the different orders of reaction. So if you had carried on the experiment for a longer period of time, right out to around about half an hour, then the volumes of gas which would have been evolved are given here. So if you'd like to take this set of data here and just add it to your set of data in order to have a complete set of data. You can see at the bottom I've also added on a, a value for what I've called infinite time. This is whereby the reaction has been driven to completion. This is done by actually warming up the reaction in order to drive it to completion then re-equilibrating it at 35 degrees centigrade and taking an evolved volume of gas and we can see that the infinite reading time, time at t equals infinity is an evolution of 35.1 centimeter cubed of oxygen. So take all this data and add it to your data set and then we'll be ready to do the analysis. Okay so we have all our data now we need to analyze it Here's the reaction which we've been looking at, the decomposition of hydrogen peroxide. Now if we go back to some of our first lectures, we can write out a rate for this process in terms of the decomposition or disappearance, if you like, of the hydrogen peroxide. So the rate is minus because it's disappearing, the rate of change of the concentration of hydrogen peroxide with time. Now we don't know the order of this reaction. Uh, it will be therefore equal to some rate constant times the concentration of hyd hydrogen peroxide uh, to some power, which will be the order with respect to hydrogen peroxide. It will also be uh, re reliant on the amount of iodide which we had in as catalyst raised to some power. However, um, the iodide concentration itself is going to be a constant uh, for any particular reaction that we do because it acts as a catalyst. If I, I could have added more hydrogen iodide and then I'd get a different rate but for the, the actual experiment that we did the iodide concentration will be constant. Therefore if this here is constant we can take this term here into the rate constant K and then we have a new expression whereby the rate of change of the concentration of hydrogen peroxide with time is now equal to an apparent rate constant K times the concentration of hydrogen peroxide raised to some power N which is the order of the reaction. Now if we want to determine the order of the reaction we have to make some relevant plots and if they're a straight line then we'll be able to determine the order of the reaction. So we just remind ourselves what we would have to do. Let's suppose the reaction was zero order, then the relevant plot will be just plotting the concentration of hydrogen peroxide versus time. If it's first order we need to plot the natural log of the hydrogen peroxide concentration versus time and if it's second order we need to plot one over the concentration versus time. And if we do that we will get a slope if it's a straight line and therefore an incept as well. If it works out for zero order the slope will be minus the zero order rate constant and the intercept will be the initial concentration in this case of hydrogen peroxide. This slope will be the same if it's first order but if it's first order rate constant the intercept will be logarithm of the initial concentration and if it's a second order plot the slope will be positive, the rate constant, a second order rate constant, and the intercept will be 1 over the initial concentration, in this case of the hydrogen peroxide. Now we are not measuring the concentration of hydrogen peroxide as a function of time, we are measuring the volume of evolved oxygen gas, and therefore we need to understand how one is related to the other. So if we think about the reaction as it proceeds, the hydrogen peroxide is reacting and the amount that reacts will be directly proportional to the volume V of oxygen released. So the longer it reacts, the more oxygen is released. 
the larger V becomes. If we go right to the end of the process, when everything has reacted, we get finally a final volume. This is one I call the, the value at T infinity. And the when everything is reacted, this total volume of gas must be proportional to the initial amount of hydrogen peroxide that we had at the beginning, because now everything has been converted into water and oxygen, and we get this final volume of gas released. So we don't want either of these two things. We don't want the amount reacted, and we don't want the uh, initial amount. Uh, what we want is the amount of hydrogen peroxide at any given time t. Well, we can get that because we just need to take the amount that we start with minus the amount that was reacted, and that will give you the amount that you have at any particular time t. So we can get at least a proportionality rather easily because uh, this is proportional to v final and this is proportional to v, so the whole thing will be proportional to v final minus uh, v. We can also work out the constant of proportionality because we know that the hydrogen peroxide concentration at the end is proportional to the final volume V given out and therefore the hydrogen peroxide concentration is equal to some constant, the constant of proportionality times V final. Now we know V final because it was that the last value in the table that I gave you at infinite time so that was 35.1 centimeters cubed consequently we know this if we know the starting concentration of hydrogen peroxide, well, we know that because we know what the concentration was at the beginning. So I'll give you that now. The concentration at the beginning of the experiment was 0 0.892 moles per litre of hydrogen peroxide. That's after the dilution with uh, potassium iodide. So if you use this value here and this value here, you should be able to determine the constant of proportionality. OK, so now we have all the tools to get going. So what you need to do at this point is you need to make some plots. So you need to make a, a zero order plot where you're plotting uh, the concentration versus time. So your concentration will be this constant of proportionality, which you'll have to determine times uh, V final minus V. If you want to do a first order plot, you'll need to plot the natural log of the same thing. If you want to do a second order plot, you'll need to do one over the same thing. Make all these plots with these on the y-axis and your time on the x-axis. And then from that, you should be able to determine the order of the reaction by just seeing which of those plots is a straight line. When you found the straight line plot, uh, use the straight line in order to determine the slope and thereby get the rate constant. So if you go away now you can use an Excel spreadsheet or any other method in order to do the analysis. After you've done that you can enter the order that you obtain and the rate constant you obtain. Let's see if we get them right and after that I'll show you how the calculations should have been done and the numbers that you should have got from the experiment.